Greetings to all viewers. This is Professor Ankit Singh. In my previous lecture, we were discussing regarding road patterns and the types of road patterns that are used for town planning. Okay, the next topic is planning surveys. Okay. So when we plan to develop any area or any town, we need to conduct a few surveys. The very first of those kind is planning surveys. Highway planning phase includes assessment of road length requirement for an area and preparation of master plan showing the phasing of plan annual or five year plans. Okay, so there are basically two steps. First step is to assess the road length required for that area. And the second step is to prepare a master plan which shows the phasing of that area. And this plan could be for a period of one year or for five years. Okay, so these are the two basic steps involved in highway planning. For assessing road length requirement, field surveys are to be carried out to collect the data required for determining the length of the road system. Okay, so in order to assess the road length to find out what is the amount of road length that is required, we need to conduct a few field surveys. We need to go into that area and conduct <coughs> surveys to find out what is the road length required. Okay, the field surveys required for collecting the factual data may be called as planning surveys or fact finding surveys. So these surveys which are carried out are either called as planning surveys or fact finding surveys. The factual studies point to an intelligent approach for planning and these studies should be carried out if the highway program is to be protected from inconsistent and short sighted policies. Okay, the planning surveys consists of the following studies. So under the planning surveys, there are four types of studies which we need to conduct, which are economic studies, financial studies, traffic or road use studies and engineering studies. Firstly, economic studies. So under the economic studies, what are the details that we need to conduct or uh, sorry, collect. Okay. So population and its distribution in each village, town or other locality with the area classified into groups. Okay. So initially what we do, the area which is under consideration, we classify it into different groups and then we collect data regarding to population of each area. Okay. Of each group. The area under consideration is classified into groups and then for each group the population data is collected. Trend of population growth. This means how the, the trend, what is the trend that is followed for that area. Okay, Either the population is increasing arithmet uh, arithmetically or geometrically. Okay, We need to find out that whether it is increasing or decreasing. Next point is agricultural and industrial products and their listing in classified groups area wise. Okay, so what is the agricultural and in industrial produce of that certain area? Okay, industrial and agricultural development and future trends. Existing facilities with regard to communication recreation and education. Now all these factors affect the road network that is to be provided. Okay. And finally the last point is per capita income. Okay. So what is the income of each individual in one year? The next type of studies is financial studies. Under the financial studies data which is collected are sources of income and estimated revenue from taxation on road transport. Okay. If taxation is being done on the road transport, so what is the estimated revenue? Okay. Assuming we provide certain length of road network, then what could be the estimated revenue after you collect the tax from the people? Okay. And what are the initial sources of income or existing sources of income? 
living standards okay what is the living standard of people in that area okay which class do they belong to resources to local level sorry resources at local level toll taxes vehicle registration and fines future trends in financial aspects the next type of studies is traffic or road use studies first point is traffic volume in vehicles per day annual average daily traffic peak and design hourly traffic volume okay so we need to find out the traffic volume which would be using the roads that we are going to provide okay <clears throat> origin and destination studies okay all these here are parts of traffic engineering which we will be discussing later on in module number 3 traffic engineering but for now you need to understand uh, what is origin and destination studies okay if a vehicle is traveling from point a to point b in a certain amount of time then the data collected to find out its origin and destination okay the survey that is conducted to find out it the origin and the destination of a single trip okay assuming a a person is traveling from point a to point b then his origin will be point a and his destination would be point b okay so such studies are to be conducted to find out the data regarding the travel of the people who reside in that area traffic flow patterns okay so what is how is the traffic flow in that area mass transportation facilities okay what are the existing mass transportation facilities in that area or what could be the late uh, the uh, mass transportation facilities which we need to provide in future for example buses trains metros etc accidents their cost analysis and causes future trend and growth in traffic volume and goods traffic trend in traffic pattern okay so again the traffic flow patterns growth in passenger trips and trend in the choice of mode okay so how is there is there any growth in the passenger trips due to increase in population or increase in uh, vehicle use okay so all these data need to be collected engineering studies okay under the engineering studies we need to conduct surveys such as topographic survey topographic survey giving us the geographical details of that area soil surveys okay uh, performing various tests on the soil and finding out the type of soil its strength values with respect to different engineering criteria location and classification of existing roads okay based on the geography and other elements pre present in that area what could be the probable location okay of the road and how we could classify it classification would be based on the traffic estimation of possible developments in all aspects due to the proposed highway development road life studies what could be the life of that road traffic studies origin and destination studies special problems in drainage construction and maintenance of roads so the next topic is highway alignment and surveys firstly let us try to understand what we mean by highway alignment the position or layout of the center line of the highway on the ground is called the alignment okay so the position or the layout of the center line of the highway the center line of the highway is marked before the actual construction of the highway okay this marked line is known as alignment the horizontal alignment includes straight path the straight path the horizontal deviations and curves okay so a straight path horizontal deviation and curves all these come under the horizontal alignment and under the vertical alignment changes in gradient and vertical curves are covered okay now what is gradient gradient is the 
rise or fall of the existing road in the direction of movement okay so it is a slope provided it may be a in uh, positively inclined slope or it may be a negatively declined slope so the slope could be upwards or downwards okay vertical curves vertical curves are the smooth curves which are used to join any two gradients okay we will be studying this in module 2 in detail regarding horizontal alignments and vertical alignments a new road should be aligned very carefully as improper alignment would result in one or more of the following disadvantages okay if an improper alignment is set up then what could be the disadvantages first one is increase in construction cost increase in maintenance cost increase in vehicle operation cost and increase in accident rate okay so these four are the disadvantages that could be caused if the alignment is not properly set up now once the road is aligned <coughs> and constructed it is not easy to change the alignment due to increase in cost of adjoining land and the construction of costly structures by the road side hence what we need to do is we uh, since the alignment once set up cannot be changed okay hence we need to set up the alignment very carefully okay considering all future trends of growth okay so when we set up the alignment for horizontal curves or vertical curves or a straight path or any geometrical element then we need to consider it carefully since uh, why is this because once the alignment is set and the road is constructed if later on we need to change the radius of a horizontal curve then we will need to demolish that road and reconstruct it okay and again to reconstruct it if the radius of the horizontal curve has been increased then we would need or require a greater land mass okay the land area would be more then again we would need to acquire that land area okay which would lead to increase in construction costs hence the importance of careful considerations while finalizing the alignment of a new road need to be over emphasized the next point to be discussed is requirements of an ideal alignment okay so what is an ideal alignment the basic requirements of an ideal alignment between two terminal stations are that it should be short easy safe and economical there are four points you need to remember short easy safe and economical by short what do we try to mean here it is desirable to have a short or shortest alignment between two terminal stations that is it could be a and b if considering a and b a straight alignment would be the shortest though there may be several practical considerations which would cause deviations from the shortest path okay so ideally what we try to do is provide a straight road between any two points okay suppose we need to join a and b then what is the ideal ideal condition that we join both the areas with a straight road okay so since the straight road is the least distance then the cost of construction would be less okay it would be the, the least the next point is easy the alignment should be such that it is easy to construct and maintain the road within with minimum problems also the alignment should be easy for the operation of vehicles with easy gradients and curves okay so the gradient should not be too high okay the slope should be less and the curves should be smooth okay and there should be easy construction easy construction practices should be possible over there okay and also easy maintenance practices next point is safe the alignment should be safe enough for construction and maintenance from the point from the viewpoint of stability of natural hill slopes embankment and cut slopes and foundation of embankments also it should be safe for the traffic operation with safe geometric features okay so with respect to geometric design the alignment should be safe okay we will be studying regarding the geometric design in detail in the next module 
the fourth point is economical okay the road alignment should be considered economical only if the total cost including initial cost maintenance cost and vehicle operation cost is lowest okay so such a alignment should be selected whose initial cost maintenance cost and the vehicle operation cost cost are the lowest all these factors should be given due consideration before working out the economical value of each alignment okay so these were the requirements of an ideal alignment in my next lecture we discuss regarding factors controlling alignment thank you